Hey everybody, Joy here. It's Wednesday, May 27th, I think, 2020. Yeah, I just wanted to stop by for a minute to tell you what I'm going to do today. Mm. Yeah, it's like, we don't care what you're going to do today, Joy. <laughs> but I thought of a couple things I needed to tell you before I do it. Number one, a lot of you like this fabric that I got from Fabric Mark Fabrics recently. So I'm going to tell you the actual name and number. Hold on a second. Ta -da! I know, I should get prepared for these videos, right? Okay, so let me see which one it is. It's this one. So you can write this number down, SKU number, then you can go to FabricMartFabrics.com, tell them Joy sent you and um, put this in the search and then this fabric should come up if it's still available alright I can't really tell if you can see that until I edit this so hopefully you can I'll read it to you just in case it's um, S like Sam F like father A 9049 W Deep blue, black, white, rayon, lycra, floral branches, jersey knit. All right. Okay. So if they still have it, you can get some. I really like it. I'm tempted to get some more because, you know, after I wasted half of it with that Peggy pattern, I could only make that short top. So I have this much left, and I don't know. What could you make out of that? <laughs> A sleeveless tank, I guess. Well, hello, I've already got one. <laughs> so, here's what I decided to do today. Back a year ago, hopefully not two years ago, I made myself some sleep shirts. And one of them's pink and one of them's the white one with the black zebras on it and the zebras all have sunglasses, remember? <laughs> Well, I have worn those and worn those and worn those and worn those. I'm telling you, the zebras, the stripes are falling off of them. And the pink one, I'm just sick of looking at. <laughs> so I thought, oh my gosh, I have this awesome new, super, super easy pattern from Fit Nice. Remember the dolman sleeve? Super comfortable. So I'm going to go get two, maybe three knits from my stash. And I'm going to make myself some new sleep shirts. Super, super easy. My gosh, you don't even have to finish the edges if you don't want to. I mean, who's going to lift up the sheets and go, Oh my gosh, you did not put a hem in that nightgown. I'll guarantee you my husband won't. <laughs> but then again, knowing me, I probably will finish the neck and the arms. So, and then here's the next thing. I found this shirt in my closet. I bought this shirt, goodness, probably 15 years ago at Walmart. And it's one of my very favorite shirts. You can tell it's tight on me now. When I bought it, it used to be nice and loose. But anyway, <laughs> that's another story, right? So anyway, I put this on this morning. And I love the neckline of it. It's, it's a square, but it's not a square. Because it has these rounded corners. So, I mean, you actually could finish it because there's no point, so you could easily finish the top of it. So I've decided that on my new sleep shirts I'm going to make today, and hey, I ought to embroider them too, huh? God, I need to think up some sleep sayings. What's a sleep saying? Rip Van Winkle? That's not a good one. <laughs> what do we know about sleep? Ah, uh, lullaby and good night. How about that? That would be good. Okay, so... That'll take me longer than one day, though, if I start embroidering things. It takes me forever to get my embroidery machine set up and get the things adjusted and sent over. But I still want to do it. I just need to find some not very dense designs. So I want to make the neckline like this. And I'm going to make the dolman sleeve. And I'm going to make it to, you know, a couple inches above my knees. Okay, that was a break. Every time you see me change... And, you know, I'm standing like this, and the next thing I'm standing like this, or I'm standing like this, or... It's because I took a break because I had to sneeze. <laughs> okay? Oh, my goodness, how many sneeze breaks have I taken in my videos? Millions. So, anyway, what you can do, of course, is you can Google 
sleep sayings or sleep poems or I don't know, something like that. And then if nobody already made an embroidery design of it, I can make my own. So I might spend the rest of the day just doing that. <laughs> so I may put this video up tomorrow, which will be Thursday. We shall see. Well, let me see. I wanted to tell you, I told you about that and it's a number. And I told you about this. And hey, thank you, you super brainy ladies. Thank you for all your comments about Blueprint. Oh my goodness, that's another thing I need to do is I need to go downstairs and get my laptop and I need to start playing back um, my 159 classes. Oh my gosh, a bunch of them are crochet. I was gonna be a crocheter. I have, you've probably seen these three drawers over here in a blue cart. That's all the yarn I bought to be a crocheter. <laughs> I never got around to it. The thing about crocheting is you, you just sit. You just sit for hours. And, and if I do that, my butt is going to be as wide as this room. And so that's one of the reasons I didn't really get into crocheting. But I paid for the classes and I paid for the patterns. So I want to watch those and maybe just start some of them and be sure to print out the instructions. You know, one of you said print out all the materials. Yes, yes. But I said yesterday, some of the materials, you might get half a page. Other people, like in the crochet patterns, there might be 10, 20 pages. So yeah, need to do that too. And hey, go ahead and buy a whole bunch of ink for your printer, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go to my desktop and I'm gonna see if I can find some sleep sayings or some sleep pictures that aren't too juvenile. I guess I could put sleeping girl. <laughs> And I'm making myself some new pajamas. They're not pajamas. I hate pants. I can't wear pants to bed. So, and also important, you want to use a cotton knit. Don't use the ITY knits. Don't use the polyesters because they're too hot in bed. In my opinion. There she goes. Every time she says something, it's her opinion. Yes, this is true. But in my opinion, the slinky ITY knits and the polyester knits are too hot in bed. I don't know, maybe I haven't used an ITY knit yet, but I have used other knits and um, just pull them off in the middle of the night and throw them in the floor, so that's not good. <laughs> and not for the reason we used to do that, okay? <laughs> All right. Mm. Sorry, but I haven't had enough coffee yet this morning. I'm going to stop this video right here and I'll be back when I do something. <laughs> I thought I'd turn my camera on while I'm doing this just in case anybody cares. I've got my Dolman Fit Nice Dolman pattern and this is the full Dolman sleeve. I am going to make it smaller. Now I already tried this once and you guys saw the blouse I did it on. It was the one with the dark blue on the bottom and the white on the top it was the border print but I think I took too much out of the dolman so I'm going to do it again and I'm going to slap down one lady said why do you have to slap down your ruler well it's because I'm odd and that's what I do okay <laughs> so I think I'm going to come up about one inch I'm going to put it here on my grid you see this grid and Slap down some weights. And then I'm going to take my curve. And you can use your French curve. You can use your seam allowance curve. You can use maybe this curve. Um, get your curves out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how this lines up with the curve that Judy put in it. Okay, and so the curve that Judy put in it matches this perfectly from 18 to 11. So I'm just going to move this up to that one inch line and I'm going to redraw this curve. And I'll bring it to you and show it to you after I get the lid off my pen. Hey, you want to see something? Look what I got. I showed this to you guys. You're not guys. Why do I call you guys except that one husband? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Husband. <laughs> that always hears me. Um, this is the most I've found so far. And I got these on Amazon. I'll put a link below if you want to buy a big box like this. But this is all friction markers. Not pens. Markers. 
See? And there's all these colors. That's why I know I was supposed to be a teacher because I just love pens and pencils. <laughs> okay, so I marked this one inch up from where Judy has it. Then I slap down my curve that matches her curve and I'm going to come up and redraw it right there. And I'm going to start it. Let me see. Let's make sure you got it. You know how you have to fiddle with everything. So I'm going to move it up here and I'm going to draw this curve on here and I'll show it to you. Yeah. Sometimes you might have to adjust it a little bit. Let me see. Do I need adjustment duty? Not really. I just need to come out just a hair. Okay? So, since this is white on white and you can't see it, I'm going to draw. Because I can, um, remember this goes away with heat. So where I put these marks, that's the part I'm removing underneath that dolman sleeve. See, I already removed it once before. And fortunately, I kept it so I could glue it back in. See up here, this purple line, that's where I removed it before. It was too much. So now I'm going to remove this much. Just so the dolman sleeve isn't so gigantic. And you can see clear down to my knees through that arm opening. <laughs> and so then, what I'm going to do, let me roll you up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the shoulder down to where I want it on me and add a seam allowance to it. Measuring tape. All right, this pattern right now from the shoulder down to the bottom is 27 inches. So I am going to put it on me and measure down over your boob. Always include your boob because you have to cover it up. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to hold it on the way down and just above my knee is 38 inches. So I'm going to do it at 38 and a half inches. So that means when I put it on my material I will measure down to 38 and a half inches and that's how long I will make it because it's just a sleep shirt, a nightgown. Okay? Awesome! So what you do to the front, you have to do to the back. Now since we already did the back and it's exactly like the front, we can just trace what we did to the front to the back. Now how cool is that? Hey, guess what? I haven't told you guys something. I am behind on telling you stuff. I have the coolest thing to tell you. I do. Let me see. Where's that line at? Right there. I have the coolest thing to tell you. I really do. Hold on. I have some scotch tape here, and, and these don't like to write real good on scotch tape. Okay? So that's my two lines front and back. This is what I made the material girl out of, remember? And I love it. So I know I'll love the nightgowns too. Okay, so now there's the back, there's the front, put them together, and you have a nightgown. Ah! Okay, so here's the deal. I'm still working with fitness. I'm telling y'all, it is super addictive because it is so easy. Especially this. No inset sleeves, no darts, no buttons, no zippers, no nothing. And when you're using a knit, you don't even have to hem it if you don't want to. Okay? So, here's the thing. Judy, for you, just for you, is giving us a code just for you to use until, I don't know when, probably all through June at least and maybe longer. So just for my subscribers, after May 31, the two books, 
are no longer going to be on sale. They're on sale right now, but if you don't have the money right now, or you can't get them right now, and you need to wait, just for you, if you use the code TULIP, T-U-L-I-P, you can still get both of her books. Both. Both books. Both books for $99. This is regularly 50 something and this is 130 or 135. So both for 99 is dirt cheap. It's like buying a whole bunch of patterns. Super good deal. I wouldn't tell it to you if I didn't think it was. Okay? So, I'll be back after a while. Stay with me. Let me show you a cute little trick that Judy does. Judy does it with the neckline. She just cuts one big pattern and then she cuts the back, the front neckline down and leaves a, a little piece still there. And so, you can watch Judy's videos and I'm sure you've seen that. So what I did was I just cut this out and left a hinge. So I'm just going to tape that up. That's what I did before with this one. That's why I'm still able to use it. It's a great idea. And just tape that up out of your way. Then if you like it, you can cut it off permanently. If you don't like it, you can tape it back down and change it again. And remember, these marks all iron off with an iron because they're friction. F-R-I-X-I-O-N. Color markers. I'm hooped. Here I am. I'm hooped. I've marked the center down, and I've marked the line going across, and I've got my snowman. Yeah. So I'm going to go start embroidering. And then I'm going to go downstairs and make pizza for lunch. <laughs> I'll be back. I'm back. <laughs> it's 24 hours later. It's after 4 o'clock the next day since the last clip. <laughs> if I look like I'm wet up here, it's because I'm wet up here. <laughs> because when I put this on, of course, I pull it over my head and got lipstick all over the front of it. Ah! Here's the thing. I wanted to make sleep shirts, as you know. This is my Fit Nice Dolman. You can see this is screaming to the world. I need a bus dart. I already put an FBA in this before I made it a Dolman. And even then, it still wanted a bigger FBA. So I'm going to put a bigger FBA in this, and then I'm going to make pajama top number two. But how do you like my embroidery? <laughs> oh, what a fast, super easy, amazing way to make some nightgowns. I tell you, I just love it. Because nightgowns don't have to go outside and nobody's going to see them. Nobody's going to care that I need two bus darts here. <laughs> However, Jerry will know. He's listened to me so much and helped me so much. He knows when something needs a bus dart. How are you going to do it, Joy? It's a dolman sleeve. Ah! I know. But you can still do it. It's so easy. All you have to do is cut the dolman sleeve off. That's all you have to do. You cut the sleeve off, you do your FBA. You want me, want me to show you how? I bet you do, don't you? All right, let me get this off. Oh, I wanted to tell you, seven hours. I went online and I went to all the embroidery places I could think of to look for something about sleep that I could embroider on my sleep shirts. Everything was little bugs and little teddy bears and little animals and little blankets and uh. <laughs> So I decided to make my own design and it took me seven hours to make the hair on this girl seven hours I'm not kidding you because I had to take all of the little points and move them around and twirl them around and bend them and I had them over her eye and then I'd have to move them and then I'd have them over her mouth and I had to move it and then I'd have it too far on one side and the other side. <laughs> Seven hours I spent. But I think it turned out cute. What do y'all think? What does it say? Turn off the lights or else? Yeah. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. I'm going to get online and see if I can find some more cotton knits cotton. Remember you want cotton to sleep in. This comes to above my knees. I would show it to you but I've got knee-high stockings on and I look like a complete dork so 
I'll show you the whole thing later. I'll show you the next one when I fix it and I make another FBA in it. How about that? Okay? Was there anything else I was supposed to show you or tell you or do? I don't think so. Let's hurry up and do an FBA. How about that? I showed you these, right? I love them. All right, here's my pattern. I've taken the fit nice and drawn the dolman sleeve on it. The dolman sleeve is on the back side of the master top pattern. You can see a video over there at Judy's place showing you how to draw that dolman sleeve. Remember, I made mine a little smaller, so it doesn't come clear down here now, but it definitely wants another bus dart. You're going to have to have a ruler, so we're going to use this. And we are going to mark a line. Let's use red so you can see it. And we are going to simply cut off this dolman sleeve. We are going to simply cut it off. I'm going to line it up on the straight center front on a straight line. And I'm going to cut off. Where did I learn this? I learned this from that precious, precious Marta at Palmer and Plesh. At Palmer and Plesh, they've got videos about doing FBAs. They've got videos about fitting pants, videos about fitting tops. Buy their videos. Buy them. Blueprint can't take them away from you. They're worth every single penny. I think uh, Patty Palmer did one on how to measure yourself. Very good. All right, so see where I, I drew the red line? I'm going to cut that sleeve off right on that red line. And I'm going to make a couple little slashes, hash marks, so I can line it back up again. It isn't going to line up the same, but I made a couple little hash marks anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to cut that off. But before I do, I'm going to find my apex. You know where your apex is. It's under your shirt, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm going to get my apex marked. You got to know where it's at. Put this up here on your shoulder where it will be. I don't think it'll be up that high. So I'm going to make an X on my apex right there. That's my apex. Now I'm going to cut off the sleeve. This is so much fun. It's like being a mad scientist. <laughs> it's just so much fun. Billy and I love this part. A lot of people don't. That's one thing I love about Peggy Sager. You know, I have a love, not love, relationship with Peggy Sager. <laughs> Did you read? Look under my last video at what Philly wrote. Her name's Phyllis Hughes. What does she call herself? P.A. Hughes or something? She wrote a real long thing about Blueprint and about Peggy. Be sure you read that comment. It's lots of fun. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. All right, I know I'm four inches over. But that didn't come out four inches over, but that's okay. That's where I'm putting it. And I'm usually about 11 inches down. So I'm going to check how far down, because I may have been holding this paper up wrong. I know approximately where I'm supposed to be. Yes, 11. It's perfect. Came out perfect. So what you do is you measure your apexes. I'm eight. Cut that in half. So from here to here is four. So you come in from center front over four, and I come down 11. And of course you saw me hold it up to myself. But when I held it up to myself, I was like an inch off. So I've moved it to down 11 and over four, down 11 and over four. Okay, it sounds like a combination to a lock. <laughs> it's a combination, okay, all right. Now I'm going to choose a different color. How about purple? Oh, I can't do purple. I just went to a new doctor today because I have swelling in my feet and ankles and um, my doctor thought that I should go see this doctor that does massages and makes your swelling go down and so I went to see her for the first time okay so we're going to cut this over to the armhole that's no longer there so I went to see her. She never met me before. <clears throat> and Jerry went with me, and I told him, if they don't let you in, I'm leaving. 
But they did. It was no big deal. We had masks on. They had masks on. But I kept fiddling with mine. And she said, you can take that off if you want to. And I said, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that goes up into the sleeve. And this goes over into the chest. All right. Now, hopefully you can see these pink marks. I'm going to mark them a little darker. Anyway, she sat me up on the side of the bed, and he was sitting in the chair, and she was sitting on that roll-around stool, and she was sitting right up close to me. And so I was just, she was telling me all these things and all these awful things that could happen to you if you don't wear your support hose. I hate wearing support hose. <clears throat> my swelling isn't that terrible and I just think oh it doesn't matter I don't care if they're swollen a little bit but according to her you know your feet could drop off your knees could blow up you know you never know so <laughs> she was telling me all these things and after about 20 minutes she turned to Jerry and said how do you live with her with me he told his first wife his first date with me he told his first wife <laughs> he said she's the most different girl I've ever gone out with <laughs> actually I believe I had my feet up on his dash because my feet were swollen back then <laughs> and then he took me to a restaurant he took me to this club I used to go to these clubs with my girlfriends for work to try to meet a new husband, you know. And I absolutely hated it. I did learn to dance, though. I did learn to dance, and then I met all the lying husbands who cheated on their wives. And, um, used to stay out late at night and stuff. But anyway, this place was called Daddy Goldbucks, and it was in Oklahoma City. And they had a restaurant there. And so I had been there several times, and so had he. So I said, well, let's go there. And I'd never eaten there. You know, I'd just been there after work, you know, late at night to sit at a table and wait for some creep to come up and ask you to dance while you sit there with your friends, you know. And the first thing I say to them is, are you married? Ugh, unbelievable. Anyway, how did I get off on that? Let me get some green paper and I'll finish telling you the story. Here's the deal. We're going to need some tape and some green paper. By the way, get yourself some half inch wide tape. It's a lot easier to work with. Yeah, I learned it from Palmer and Flesh. So I'm going to cut up some paper to fill in these slots I just made. Now, I'm not going to make this dart disappear. I'm going to move this dart down into the bottom of this garment because it's pajamas. And I don't care if they're a little bit fuller on the bottom because then that would hide. I'm not wearing a slip to bed, no. And you know, if you don't want the knit to cling to your puffy parts, you have to wear a slip. Well, I'm not wearing a slip to bed. I'm not that desperate. So, I want to make it so it's a little bit fuller on the bottom. I don't want it too full because I don't want to fight it when I'm in bed. Yeah, this added length to the front. Yeah, and width, which is perfectly fine. Okay, can you see that? Let me turn the so like, Joy, we can't even see a thing you're doing. Hello. Okay, so here I cut the lines. I cut all the way up to the apex and over to the arm. See, here's the arm right here. I cut the arm off. Here's the part I cut off. Here's what's left. And so I've just cut right up into that arm about a third of the way up. And then I've cut over here to where a bus dart would be. A bus dart would be there. Okay? Now I'm going to cover up all of these holes with the green paper. I don't always use green paper, but when I'm showing you, you can see the green paper better. So that's why I use the green paper. Now look at, remember that great big fold? Remember the great big fold right here? Look at how it's added. This green right here, look how much it's added there. And you say, well, won't that be a bigger fold? No. 
Hey, I never said I knew how this works. I never said it because I don't. I just know it does. <laughs> I just know it does. Okay, so now I've added all this green and all this green, and here's the bus dart on the right, and I'm going to close that bus dart up. So now I have to figure out where I want to move. Now I could put this bus dart in here if I wanted to. Let me see if it's below the arm. Now see there's more room in here too where I cut this arm off. Yes, this would end up in the armhole a little bit because it's so it's so far down. So I could make it a I could make it a French dart and aim it down here at the waist. Oh my gosh, how cool would that be? But I really don't want to emphasize my boobs when it's nighttime and I don't have a bra on. I don't really want anything cupping around them, okay? So I am not going to sew a dart in it there. I'm going to move this dart down into the bottom. Yes, I am. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to cut it in two more places. Let me get a different color. What color haven't you seen? How about this color right here? So, you don't want to put it all right underneath your apex. At least I don't. I don't want to put it, and this is Peggy Sagers. Peggy Sagers is really, really smart about making things fit. And she needs to be since none of her patterns work out too right. <laughs> so I'm going to cut this up to here and over. You have to cut it to a place where you can move it to. Let me see, how am I going to do that? I'm going to put it up almost to the bust, but not all the way. Then I'm going to draw over here to the apex. Okay? So I've drawn up here and over to the apex. Now, that puts some fullness here in the, like the side right here. Then if you cut it right below the apex, you're going to get more fullness there, but I've already got fullness there. So, I'm going to add a little more out here at the side. Out here at the side, I'm going to add some more. And then we're going to move this over to the apex. Everything hinges from the apex when you're dealing with bus darts. Everything hinges from the apex. So that's going to give me some width here and some width here. All right. So let's do that. And if this doesn't work out, I can always edit it and erase all of it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go like that. And then we're going to do this one up. You say, well, why does that work? I don't know. Now we're going to close my bus dart. Can you see? Let me put some paper under the bus dart. Here's the bus dart right here. I'm sorry it's white on white, y'all. See here where I spelled right? This is the right side because I cut it in half and made two different sides, but it's still half of my front. See here it says right, so I've cut over to the apex there and I've cut over to the apex, apex there. Now I'm just going to swerve this up and close this bus dart right there. Bus dart closed. And see how it kicked this side? See how it kicked this side way out here? Then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to swing it. I'm going to swing it. See my right is separated now. I'm going to swing it out about, so it's about in between these two. Look at how much room this is adding down here. You might not be able to see it. Let me measure it. This is two inches, and this is like one and a half. So I'm going to move that over there a little more, make them even. Let's make that one and three-fourths, and this one and three-fourths. So what's one and three-fourths and one and three-fourths? Quick. Who knows math? Who knows math? One and three fourths and one and three fourths is two and six fourths. And so that would be three and two fourths. So that would be three and a half inches I've added because I closed up this bus dart I just made. Three and a half inches. Now you know what you can do? You can take a whole bunch off the side over here if you want to, if you don't want it this full. Yeah. So I've added my inch here. My inch and three quarters here, my inch and three quarters here, even though the bus dart wasn't near that big. Isn't that crazy? But it moves around the same amount. Yeah, cut it all the way to the point. 
Yeah, it moves around the same amount. It's really cool. So you have to close that bus dart up. That's shut. I'm going to make another one up really quick, and I'm going to show it to you this very day. And let's see if this really makes a difference in how that great big fold was under both of my arms. Okay? Let's get some more paper. I need to order some more colored paper so we don't have to look at green all the time. That's boring. All right, now you're going to see how I just added that to there. This is going to make my nightgown have much more fabric in it, which I may not want. I may not want that much fabric unless it's a lighter. You know, you could make this out of a woven. There's plenty of fullness in it. That would be nice, except a woven, sleeping in it, it gets so wrinkled. A real lightweight knit would be nice. Lightweight cotton knit. See all that green going in there? Isn't that fun? Okay, let's put a little more down here. Oh, I cut it too skinny. I cut it too skinny. Oh no, I'm gonna have to cut it in half and tape it together. This is tragic. Tragic, tragic. This makes your pattern bulky and heavy in places. But you know what we can do about that, right? We'll just trace it and draw a new pattern that's just one layer. Yeah, there's a solution for every problem. Yeah. Well, I don't know sometimes. Sometimes I try to tell God, you know, you could do this. You could like send an angel, you know, and make the angel scare that person to death and cause them to wake up and realize what they're doing is wrong. Or you could give them a dream. Yeah. Or you could like make a really bad storm in the middle of the night and they wake up and there's like three angels sitting on the foot of their bed. <laughs> it used to happen in the Old Testament. All right, I gotta have some more green paper. And I don't think I have any more green paper, so. <laughs> oh, well, I'm gonna have to use a different color of paper. <clears throat> All right, now, don't freak out, but I don't have any more green paper. <laughs> All right. If you run out of green paper, just use different paper. It's not the end of the world. All right, now since this moved down, moved up, when I did this new FBA, it moved the hem up right here. It moved it up. I wish I had a normal measurer thingy. It moved it up an inch and a quarter. Moved it up an inch and a quarter. So that means the front of this garment is gonna be an inch and a quarter longer. I don't really think it needs to be. This does not change the side seam. What did I say? What did I say? When you lower the front, you connect it to the side seam. And the side seam is the exact same length it always was. Now this garment suddenly wants to be a curve. So we're just going to let it be. Hmm? Well, I don't have anything to draw on there. Let's kind of go like that. I don't have anything to draw on there. You have to have a lot of paper for this hobby. <laughs> it takes a lot of paper, people. Okay, we're going to add some paper there. It's just we're going to curve this a little bit now. And so it's going to come down in places and it's going to go up in places. But we're going to have a nice curve when we get done. It takes time. Now over here, where the hem is, it's going to be, the side seam is, it's going to be exactly the same. All right, do we have enough paper in here now? Yeah. But it's so worth it, you guys. It's so worth it. When you put the garment on, it doesn't scream that it wants a bus dart. 
There, look at that. Is that pretty? That's just so pretty. See how I'm using my curve? Yeah. All right, I'll hold this up so you can see what I drew because you probably can't see it. Let's hold it up. This is what we've got. Paper sticking out everywhere, but you can see the line that I drew. This is the side seam. Right here, it has not changed one bit. I'll cut that green paper off that edge. This is the center front, and it has moved down an inch and a quarter. And you can see where I have added fullness in the pattern. That one inch FBA caused that much fullness. Isn't that wild? Now what you can do is you can cut this side seam off. I can make this side seam much narrower. I mean the width of the, you know, from here to here. I'll show you. Like you could take it and you could like fold it in like that and remove that much off the side seam. It doesn't change the darts. The darts are still there. It still works. I don't know why. I learned it from Peggy. I learned a lot of things from Peggy. You know, if she would have pattern testers, she could catch the mistakes in her patterns. And it sure would be nice, especially in the instructions. It's just horrible to give somebody such bad instructions. It really is. All right, here it is. The sleeve is still cut off. I've added all this room in here, and I've added an inch here, and I've added room here, and I've added room here. All of that is from that one little FBA. All right, now you want to see me put the sleeve back on? Look at my little hash marks there where I cut the sleeve off. Here's my sleeve that I cut off, and it goes like this, and you can see how those hash marks are now apart from each other. They are apart from each other. There's a little space in there. But that isn't going to matter. That's just going to give us a tad more room in the sleeve. And we don't care. It's very, very little bit. But can you see the hole right there if I run this up and down it? Can you see the hole that it made cutting the sleeve off like that? All right. So we're going to put some paper under there. I learned this from Marta at Palmer and Plash. Let's cut off some of this extra paper because this looks like something a flying nun would wear on St. Patrick's Day. That just isn't a good look for me. <laughs> oh, yes, okay. There we go. Tape, tape, tape. And then when you get it like you want it, trace it and draw a permanent pattern, okay? So this is what I've got now, and I'm simply going to cut something off the side seam. Maybe I might go ahead and make it up once, just like it is, and then I can just take it in with a sewing machine. Why don't we try it that way? But first I gotta come up with an embroidery design to put on the front of it, so I have to go. I'll be back. All right, check it out. Remember the great big wrinkles right here on each side? It's as smooth as it can be. No great big wrinkles. That's what an FBA can do for you. Look at that. Still a dolman. Same exact pattern. Yeah. I decided to go ahead and add a little fullness in the back, but that was real easy. All I did was cut it from the bottom all the way up to the top up here in the shoulder and then I separated it at the bottom and so I added a little bit of width a little more 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 because I didn't want all the fullness to just be in the front so <laughs> and I didn't have to embroider this one <laughs> okay I am going to stop this video right here and I am going to make more pajamas tomorrow. So I'll come back and show them to you when I get them done. This isn't hemmed. I'll hem the neck. I'll hem the sleeves. And you can't see the bottom, but it's here. See, here's the bottom. There it is. <laughs> it comes a um, couple inches above my knees. Comfortable. This is a soft, 
cotton knit. I got this from Fabric Mart Fabrics, I'm pretty sure, but it was a year ago. But it is just as soft, I can tell it's cotton because it's not clingy, it doesn't hang on your pointy parts, you know what I'm saying? I hate pajamas that hang on your pointy parts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it feels wonderful. I'm going to go cook supper in it. It feels so good. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye for now.